In the previous video, I showed you the math for how to calculate TWAP, time weighted average price. In this video, I'll show you how to actually calculate it in Uniswap v2 using Solidity. Here, I've already created a hard hat project and installed some packages. Notice that for this contract, we're using Solidity 0.6.6. .6. This is because the two Uniswap NPM packages that we're going to need is targeted for Solidity 0.6.6. .6. So that is why we're going to be using the older version of Solidity to write this contract. The first thing that we will need to do is import some Solidity contracts from the Uniswap NPM library. I'll name this contract contract Uniswap B2 TWAP. In Uniswap B2, the numbers are represented in decimals, but Solidity does not have any decimal data types. So they've created their own called fixed point. So to use decimals in this contract, we'll have to declare using fixed point for star. Next, we'll define the minimum time that we need to wait before we can update the TWAP. I'll call this uint public constant all caps period is equal to 10. This means that we'll have to wait a minimum of 10 seconds before we can update the TWAP. Now, if you're writing a TWAP in the mainnet, this will usually be something like 30 minutes, one hour or more. But for this example, I don't want to wait too long, so I'll just make it 10 seconds. The pair contract is a contract that holds the two tokens and does the swaps. So we'll say I uni swap b2 pair. I'll make this variable public, immutable since it does not have to change, and I'll name it pair. We also store the two tokens by saying address public immutable token 0 and likewise address public immutable token 1. To calculate the TWAP we need to store a variable called price cumulative. So I'll type uint public price 0 cumulative last and likewise for price 1 cumulative last. And we'll store the timestamp of when these two price cumulatives were last updated by typing uint 32 public block time stamp best. Next, we'll store the TWAP for token 0 and token 1. So I'll type fixed point dot uq 112 times 112. This variable will be public and I'll name it price 0 average. And likewise for price 1 average. This data type fixed point dot uq 112 times 112 is not a data type that is available in Solidity. It is a data type that is defined by Uniswap B2 and we import it over here. What this data type does is it represents a decimal number. The range for this decimal number is from 0 to 2 to the 112 minus 1 and the resolution is 1 over 2 to the 112. So this data type, the first 112 bits represents the decimal part and the next 112 bits represents the whole number part. Next we'll write the constructor and initialize some of these variables. So I'll type constructor. For the input we need to pass in the address of the pair. So I'll type i uniswap b2 pair. I'll name it underscore pair and this constructor is public. Notice that since we're using Solidity 0.6, we need to declare the constructor as public. If you're using Solidity 0.8, then you don't have to declare the constructor as public. And then we assign the pair from the input to the pair of the state variable, pair. If you're confused by this syntax over here, then this code is the same as passing in an address and then passing in the address to the interface. The top code over here is shorter, so this is the code that we'll be using. We also set token 0 and token 1 by typing token 0 is equal to pair dot token 0 and likewise for token 1. We also record price 0 and price 1 cumulative last and the last time that these variables were updated, block time stamp last. So I'll type price 0 cumulative last is equal to pair dot price 0 cumulative last. Likewise for price one cumulative last, get it from pair dot price one cumulative last. And then we'll update the block timestamp by calling pair dot get reserves. Get reserves returns three outputs, reserve zero, reserve one, 
and block time snap last. We only need the third output, so we'll ignore the first two output and assign the last output to block time stamp last. And that completes the constructor. For this contract, we'll write two functions. Function called update. This will update the price zero average and price one average. And the function consult. For the input, a user will pass in the token, either token zero or token one, and amount in. This will calculate the amount out using either price zero average or price one average. Let's write the function update first. When the function update is called, we'll first get the current price zero cumulative and price one cumulative. So we'll type un price zero cumulative, un price one cumulative, and un 32 block time stamp is equal to uniswap b2 oracle library dot current cumulated prices and we'll need to pass in the address of the pair so we'll say address pair notice that since we define the pair as an interface here we'll need to cast this pair as address once we get the current price zero cumulative and price one cumulative and the last time that this pair contract was updated which is stored in block timestamp Next, we'll calculate how much time has elapsed since the last time we called update and this block timestamp. So we'll say uint time elapsed is equal to block timestamp minus block timestamp last, which is a state variable that we define. We will require that the time elapsed is greater than the minimum duration before we can call update. And this is stored in period. So here we'll say require time elapsed is greater than or equal to period. With the error message, time elapsed is less than min period. Next, we'll calculate the price averages by taking the current price cumulative, subtracting it from the last price cumulative, and dividing it over the time elapsed. So we'll type price zero average is equal to price zero cumulative minus price zero cumulative last divided by time elapsed. Now since price zero average is a fixed point, we'll need to cast this into a fixed point. So we'll type fixed point dot uq 112x112 parentheses. This uq112x112 is actually a struct and the input for this struct must be a un224. So we'll cast this expression as un224 by typing uint224. Wrap this whole expression and that completes price zero average. Notice that this expression over here, the current price zero cumulative minus the previous price zero cumulative divided by the time elapsed is the exact same equation that we derived for how to calculate TWAP in the previous video. So we'll do the same thing to calculate price one average. So we'll type price one average is equal to fixed point UQ112, price one cumulative minus price one cumulative less divided by time elapsed. Notice that for this expression over here, we're subtracting two numbers, but in solidity 0.6, there is a possibility for overflow and underflow. This is a desired behavior. We do not care if the numbers overflow. Let's say that we have two numbers, the previous price cumulative and the current price cumulative, A and B. When we do a subtraction, we get this distance. For this example, the distance between B and A is five of these dashes. Now imagine a case where the current price cumulative overflows so that the previous price cumulative is greater than the current price cumulative. However, when we subtract B from A, notice that the distance is still preserved. Before we said the distance was five of these dashes, even after the number B overflows, the distance between B and A still remains the same, five dashes. So this is why we're not using safe math over here to subtract these two numbers. Once we get the two price averages, we will finally update these state variables. So I'll scroll down and then type price zero cumulative last is equal to the current price zero cumulative. So that'll be price zero cumulative 
and likewise for price one cumulative last and lastly we'll update block timestamp last is equal to block timestamp from uniswap and that completes the function for update call this function once wait for a minimum of period call it again and you'll be able to compute the two time weighted average prices let's now write the function for consult given a token either token 0 or token 1 and the amount of token put in this function will calculate the amount out using the price 0 average and price 1 average so the first thing that we'll do is require that the token from the input is either token 0 or token 1 by typing require token is equal to token 0 or token is equal to token 1 with the error message invalid token if token is equal to token 0 then amount out is equal to price 0 average the average price of token 0 multiplied by amount in and since price 0 average is not a uint it is a custom data type called uq112 times 112 we'll have to put it back into uint and we can do that by using a function called decode 144 we'll do something similar if token is equal to token 1 so we'll type else amount out is equal to price 1 average multiplied by amount in decode 144 in this case the amount out is the amount of token 1 that you'll get for putting in amount in of token 0 that completes this contract let me try compiling it and fix any errors I'll open my terminal and try to compile the contract by typing mpx hardhat compile and I get some error. The first error is time elapsed which I've misspelled it over here so I'll fix that and try to compile the contract again and the contract compiled successfully. I've deployed the TWAP contract onto the Robson testnet. Let's try calling some function so I'll scroll down and then we'll call consult. For the token, we'll pass in token1, so I'll copy this address, paste it here, and then for amount in, I'll paste in 10 to the 18. And that is the average price for token0. We can observe a change in the price average by doing a swap and then calling the function update twice. We'll do a trade on the Uniswap v2 router on the Robson test network. We'll trade one token0 for any amount of token1. Once the trade is successful, this would have some effect on the prices of the two tokens. So we'll call update on the TWAP contract. We'll call the function update once to update price 0 and price 1 cumulative last. After the first update, I'll call update again. Price 0 and price 1 cumulative last will reflect the prices from about 5 minutes ago. And then I called update now. So when we get the price averages, it should be close to the current price. The second call to update was successful, so let's now call the function console again. Hopefully we'll see some change in the price average. So I'll hit query, and you can see that the price average changed. 